California. Uh, thank you very much uh, to my colleague from Florida. And uh, I appreciate you identifying uh, this very important issue of the attempt of the Chinese Communist Party uh, to gain influence at American universities uh, in very uh, concerning ways. Uh, because it so clearly highlights the mentality and strategy of the CCP, uh, that they understand where the battle lines are being drawn in the 21st century. Uh, and the truly concerning thing is that increasingly China is beating the United States at its own game, outpacing us and the rest of the world in key areas of technological advancement. Through their actions, the CCP has shown an understanding that the 21st century will belong to the most innovative nation, the one that's able to harness the full power of new technologies. And so uh, China knows that for decades that nation was unquestionably the United States. But here's what we've seen over the last two decades, is that China has dramatically ramped up its own investment in research and development, cutting into America's traditional dominance. From 2000 to 2019, China's share of global R&D quadrupled to nearly a quarter, while our share slid from 37% to just 27%. China has increased its R&D spending by nearly 16 times over the same period and plans to compound its R&D investments by an additional 7% annually. By contrast, federal R&D investment in the United States has never surpassed 0.8% of GDP over the last decade. Of course, spending isn't the only metric that matters. The United States is also increasingly losing the talent battle, and the trend lines are getting worse. China has consistently graduated more STEM PhDs than the United States, and of course, many are getting educated right here in the United States. Looking at the publication of peer-reviewed articles and journals, Chinese scholars surpassed the United States in the last decade. In 2020, China published 38% more peer-reviewed articles than the United States, and is on track to extend this gap even further over the next five years. So this all puts in perspective the pervasive attempts by the Chinese Communist Party to gain leverage over American universities. Even though colleges and universities are required to report foreign gifts and contracts under Section 117 of the Higher Education Act, over $6.5 billion in unreported federal money received by colleges has already been uncovered. The Biden administration has done little to enforce this reporting requirement or open new investigations into how China is influencing our higher education system, even though China wields the spending to co-opt innovative research. And that is the key, is that China has, has uh, signaled that intellectual property is absolutely key to its long-term goals. And for years, the CCP has sought to acquire IP through outright theft from US companies uh, or by getting, gaining influence in our universities. But what we also have to acknowledge in this discussion is that their strategy has gotten much more sophisticated. That in addition to outright theft, China has signaled its plans to, uh, in fact, elevate the status of the China National Intellectual Property Administration to make it a top-level independent agency. And while President Biden didn't mention IP at all in his most recent State of the Union address, Chinese President, uh, President Xi Jinping speaks about IP frequently. We will increase investment in science and technology through diverse channels and strengthen local protection of intellectual property rights, he said in his speech at the opening of the 20th National Congress of the Communist Party of China last year. So clearly, the United States is at risk of forfeiting our technological edge at a time when it is more important than ever to protecting our national interests. To outcompete China, we need to out-innovate China. And that requires policymakers to act with urgency, not only to protect our companies and universities from Chinese influence, but also to change the policy environment in ways that promote and protect American innovation. But unfortunately, recent policy changes have done just the opposite. For example, FTC Chair Lena Khan has proposed sweeping new rules to unilaterally ban employers from using non-compete agreements, something California, by the way, has already done. This will hamstring employers in the most competitive, trade-secret-rich sectors, artificial intelligence, biotechnology, and provision manufacturing, and render the United States less competitive than China. 
Meanwhile, administrative processes at the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office are creating headaches and worse for innovators seeking to defend their patents. A quasi-judicial administrative body within the USPTO, the Patent Trial and Appeal Board, or PTAB, has become a favored forum for companies to challenge the validity of patents they are accused of infringing. This works to the disadvantage of innovators and small businesses who must defend their IP in court and the PTAB simultaneously, reducing the incentive to invent in the first place. But here's the good news is that the United States has a proven track record of beating authoritarian governments in strategic technological competitions. But we didn't beat the Soviet Union to the moon by chance. It required a generational investment in cutting-edge research and development, which was enabled by American citizens solving the toughest technological problems of their day. And we have that same capacity uh, in the challenges we now face in the 21st century. But that requires a change in how we approach uh, intellectual property and innovation in this country. And I think that the issue that is being highlighted today, the outright attempts by uh, the CCP to go to our centers of, uh, of research, of higher learning, our centers of intellectual life in this country, shows that they understand the stakes. And it's, uh, it's time that we here uh, in Congress uh, and, uh, and, and uh, throughout our government understand that as well. Uh, so I want to thank uh, the, uh, my, my fellow subcommittee chair uh, for bringing this issue to our attention, and I yield back. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kiley. Ladies and gentlemen, and Mr. Speaker, if you're just tuned